Morning, madam. Morning. How may I help you? Mom, are you the receptionist? Yes, I am. What is the problem? I came to sign my clearance form so that I can get my certificate. Are you seeking for admission? Yes, mom. As a matter of fact, the deadline for buying of admission form is two days from now. What were you doing all that time? Why do you feel now is the right time for you to come? You should know at your age that in everything in life, the earlier, the better. Please, mom, do not be angry with me. I lost my dad, who used to be my sponsor, a year ago. Since then, life has not been easy with us. My mother finds it very difficult to provide food for the family. How many are you in the family? We are three siblings, plus my mother, making four all together. I told my mother to find some money to me, but she said to me she does not have money. That was the reason that I could not come on time. What a pity! Sorry about the unfortunate incident. Go and give the form to my boss to sign for you. I am not the one signing the form. Yes, come in. How may I help you, sir? I came to sign my clearance form to use in pursuing my university admission. What a beautiful young lady! Thank you, sir. Here is the clearance form. Young lady, I will sign the form for you, but you have to do something with me. Please, sir, I don't understand what you are saying. Something like what? You know, we have closed the signing of clearance form. If I sign the clearance form for you, it means I am violating the rules. And the regulation of what was said in the meeting. Please, sir, do it for me because of God. The whole fault was not from me. It is just that I lost my father, who used to be my sponsor, and my mother alone could not provide for the four siblings alone. This makes life tough with me, young girl. It is what I am saying. I will do it, but you must do something with me. I would have loved you to show me financial kindness. But your condition is not good, so you must do the other way. Please, sir, don't do this to me. I have not done this before. I beg you in the name of God, please don't do this to me. Besides, sir, you are a married man. It will be very wrong if I do something of this manner with someone's husband. My God will not forgive me. Please, sir, kindly understand with me. As you can see. I am the only one signatory to the clearance form. Apart from me, nobody else will sign for you. And that is what I want from you. Period. Matthew five twenty seven to twenty eight says, "You have heard that it was said, 'You shall not commit adultery.' But I say to you that everyone who looks at a woman with lustful intent has already committed adultery with her in his heart." Jesus is so countercultural. Many guys will say. I'm just looking. That doesn't hurt anyone. But in God's eyes, what we do with our hearts and bodies are much closer than we think. Proverbs six thirty two says, "He who commits adultery lacks sense. He who does it destroys himself." Sir, for the sake of God, the Father of our Lord Jesus, stop this thing with me, and kindly sign this form with me. Young girl. You are talking nonsense. I am telling what I need from you, and you are preaching to me about the fear of God. What has having the fear of God in me got to do with what I am asking you? Have you realized that you are playing with your future? That if I don't sign this form for you, you will not get your school certificate. The choice is yours. Have you signed the form? No, I have not. But my boss is in the office. He is there even up till now. He told me to do something with him before he can sign my clearance form. Why are some men behaving like this? What does he take you for? I don't know. 
even with all the explanation that I have given to him, how life is difficult with us, instead for him to sign my form, he is still compelling me to go out with him before, he signs my clearance form. What are you going to do next? I will look for another man like him to come talk to him, if he will sign the form. The deadline for form entry is very close. So, I need to sign my clearance form to enable me get my certificate, and get entrance form to the admission. Do you have anyone to talk to? No. Let me refer you to my uncle. Will your uncle accept to follow me without anything attached to it? Yes, my uncle is a good man, I think he will follow you to the man without any negativity in his mind. Thanks for your concern. My daughter, were you able to get your clearance form signed, so that you can get your certificate? No mother, the man told me that I come late to sign, and as such, he has to go out with me, before he can sign it for me. Jesus Christ, has it gotten to that? No. My daughter, please don't even try it. It is a sin against the Lord. No matter the pressure on you, please do not do it. I still believe that God will surely open a door for you to succeed. I have told him that my mother did not train us like that, that I am not going to do. The man was like telling me, if I know that, I am joking with my future. That he is the only one who has signatory to the clearance form. Then I left him. Then what plans do you have now? The receptionist I met, told me that she will refer me to her uncle, to go see the man with me. Then, he will sign for me. I think that is the best thing to do. Use that method, it is the best. 1 Corinthians six eighteen says, Flee from sexual immorality. Every other sin a person commits is outside the body, but the sexually immoral person sins against his own body. Leviticus 20.10 says, If a man commits adultery with the wife of his neighbor, both the adulterer and the adulteress shall surely be put to death. Romans 13, 9 says, For the commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and any other commandment, are summed up in this word, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Adultery is a grave offense, that has been condemned throughout history, and the Bible is no exception. It speaks unequivocally, against adultery, and considers it a betrayal of the sacred bond, between husband and wife. Okay mother. One poignant story, that illustrates the devastating impact of adultery, is the account of King David, and Bathsheba. David, who was known as, a man after God's own heart. He committed adultery with Bathsheba, the wife of Uriah the Hittite, and the consequences of his actions were dire. Bathsheba became pregnant, and David attempted to cover up the affair, by having Uriah killed in battle. This story is a stark reminder of the destructive nature of adultery, and serves as a cautionary tale, for all those who would consider, straying from the path of righteousness. So, sleeping with another woman's husband, is a punishable offense before God. Don't ever try it. Do not allow any condition you are facing to push you into sleeping with people's husband. Be warned. After two days. Please sir, I am directed to meet you, to assist me in talking to my school officer to sign my clearance form. Who directed you to meet me? Sir, it is your niece, Anita, who is a receptionist in my school. Did you know, you are such a beautiful young lady? I would have loved to help you, if, and only if, you will do something that I will ask you to do. Sir, please, I don't understand you. But you have not told me to do anything yet. I would love to go out with you before we go see the man. Go out with me to where? To have fun together. Sir, let me ask you. Are you married? Ugh, ugh, ugh. No, I am not married. Sir, but I have seen a wedding ring on your marital finger. That shows that you are married. Adultery is viewed not only as a sin between an individual and God, but as an injustice that reverberates through society 
by harming its fundamental unit, the family. Adultery is an injustice. He who commits adultery, fails in his commitment. He does injury to the sign of the covenant, which the marriage bond is, transgresses the rights of the other spouse, and undermines the institution of marriage, by breaking the contract on which it is based. He compromises the good of human generation and the welfare of children who need their parents' stable union. So, you don't want to listen to me, right? Sir, I am coming. Let me land first. Adultery is a byproduct of a backsliding state. You have been rationalizing for so long that you have forgotten which way is up. When you commit adultery, a vulnerability is created, and the enemy will continue to attack you, in this area. It's much easier to commit the sin the second time around. Radical measures, must be taken to prevent this from happening again. There is also the risk of contracting the AIDS virus, or some other venereal disease, as a result of committing adultery. King Solomon wrote, For a prostitute will bring you to poverty, and sleeping with another man's wife, may cost you your very life. Can a man scoop fire into his lap, and not be burned? Can he walk on hot coals, and not blister his feet? So, it is with the man, who sleeps with another man's wife. He who embraces her will not go unpunished. But the man who commits adultery, is an utter fool, for he destroys his own soul. Wounds, and constant disgrace are his lot. His shame will never be erased. Proverbs 6 26 to 29, Proverbs 32 to 33. So, think about it. Finally, sir. Will you be happy, to notice that, every single man that need to help your daughter, want her to sleep with them? No, I will not be happy. As a married man, why do you want to sleep with young girl like me, before you help? Think about it. God, please open up a door for me, and let me sign my clearance form. I am living by your word that says, we should not commit fornication. Help me to touch the man's heart to sign this form to the glory of your name. I am passing through all manner of frustration, just to sign this form, Lord Jesus help me, Amen. Father Lord, please do not allow me commit any sin of such magnitude, just to sign this form. Send someone to me, to help me out of this mess to the glory of your name. Young lady, why are sitting down here alone, and be talking to yourself? You must have some worries. Good evening sir, I am thinking of how I will sign my clearance form, so that I can proceed in buying my entrance admission form. All the people that I ask to sign the form, are all asking me out. Why are you worrying, when you have a God, who satisfies all our need? There is nothing the Spirit of the Lord cannot do. I am the head of the school. I will use my power to sign the clearance form for you. I am super excited. Thank you Jesus for sending salvation to my soul. You know, God always sends salvation to the people that keep his commandment and your case is never an exception. Hold on to what is right. The world is becoming more and more liberal, and carnal, but the Christian is advised, not to conform to the lifestyle of the world, but to be transformed, by the word of God instead, Romans 12, 1-2. God's standard for the Christian life is that, no believer should ever be involved in fornication. Christians should not have a history of, regularly committing fornication. Neither should they ever be involved with it. If a science 5, 3, but unfortunately, even in charismatic circles, fornication is commonly found among born-again Christians. This cancer of fornication is rapidly affecting the body of Christ, because many Christians who get involved in fornication do not know its spiritual and physical implications. They do not know its complications. Here are the reasons why you would not commit fornication and adultery. Fornication is disobedience to God. 
The first reason why you should not commit fornication is that it is disobedience to God. 1 Samuel 15:22. We are all subject to the temptation to fornicate. But the priority of every Christian must be to obey the Lord. If you do not obey God, you stand to lose. Even if it does not make sense to you, your duty is still to obey God. Dear friend, the truth is that, it pays to obey God, but it costs to disobey Him. Fornication will destroy your soul, when you commit fornication, the Bible says you will destroy your soul. Proverbs 6.32 This means that, fornication will have an effect on you spiritually. Anybody who is involved in fornication, gets affected spiritually. You may not know exactly how it affects you. But it does affect you, and will lead you to backslide. Your make covenants with all sorts of people, sex is intended to be a binding experience, between two people. Know that when you commit fornication, you make a covenant with whoever you had affair with. God's plan is that, when a woman has affair for the first time, her hymen is broken, and blood is shed. Whenever blood is shed, some sort of agreement or covenant is created. That means when you have affairs with different people, you may actually be entering into union with them. Agreements are made because blood is shed. That is one of the reasons why Paul asked in 1 Corinthians 6.15. Such covenants are for real. They can affect you for the rest of your life. And finally, fornication brings sickness, there are a host of diseases that only come about through sexual intercourse. The chances of having this sickness are 50-50 if we dwell on fornication. But, when we listen to good word, we shall not become the obedient children, but also attract the blessing of God. I believe you have been touched by this video. Bye.